In this video, we're going to look at drawing architecture in pen. I'm going to take you through a demonstration drawing, explaining some of the strategies and tips and techniques that I use to progress an architectural drawing only in pen, without any pencil. So let's get to it. Our drawing subject is the new town hall in Berlin, but it's well over 100 years old. I love the contrast of this tree here, and we've got the interest of these cars and this street furniture, as I call it, to add some scale. And we have this building here to catch the shadow of the tree. For this video, we are just doing a line drawing, and I'm going to use two Copic multi-liners, a 0.5 millimeter and a 0.3. I'll use the 0.5 for this closer building and this foreground area and this car and for this tree. And I'll use the 0.3 for the further distances. Using a finer, lighter line for objects further away helps create a sense of depth. Where to start is always the first consideration. Because I'm drawing directly with pen, and so I can't erase any mistakes, I need to go a little bit slower at the start, a little more carefully at the start, while I establish and get a feel for the proportions, although that will get easier as the drawing progresses. And I'm going to start with this corner column here. It's a nice simple shape to get the proportions correct and to draw fairly accurately. And then I can use that to measure the subjects on each side and even alignment for above. So let's start. With this column established, I can actually see that if I just go about the same distance to the left, I've got this line, because then I know where these horizontal lines will end. I don't need to know exactly how high it's going to go at this stage, so I'm going to draw it a bit less than what I know it's going to be. It's worth noting things such as this little corner bit here comes quite some way out from our column. And this is what I mean by getting alignment from the things we've already drawn. I like to measure perspective lines like this. If you want some videos on perspective theory, I've got a playlist on, on my perspective videos. However, we don't need to understand it if we can accurately draw what we see. So when I position the base of this column, I see that it's just a bit above the base of here. So I keep referencing back to what I've already drawn. Never be afraid to count how many of something you need. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it's important to realize that with foreshortening, even across this distance, the columns do get narrower. For shortening is the part of perspective that says that as things move further away, visually they compress. It's important that we try and get the apex of this pediment in the correct space. And the first thing I always do is I look to see what it lines up with. I know this is actually in the center of this facade if I look from the front, but from this angle, if I draw straight down, it lines up really with the gap between the, the fourth and fifth column. So it's here. And the height of it is really just below here. This corner is over the second column. The other thing I can do is I can also measure the angle to see if it's going to be correct. Need to position this street sign here. And I need to leave room for cars here, so I won't go down very far there. The important thing is to get these perspective angles correct and to realize that these angles, the higher they go, get steeper and steeper. So 
So from this point, I'm going to get this perspective angle done, and it's a very steep one. I need to establish where this corner is so I know where this finishes, but I'm going to work on the windows first. These extreme angle lines become quite long, which is also a challenge in our drawing. Now, to get this line in, I'm actually going to look at this distance and see that it's about one and a half columns. So it's going to be about here. And for me, to take the line up from the middle is a more accurate way. And I can see that the bottom of these windows lines up pretty much at the top of the column. That gives me that point, and now I measure off that angle. This second tier of windows lines up about here. Always it's keeping the perspective lines in place that's the important thing. Again, with these windows that we can only see slightly in between the pilasters, it's best to underdraw rather than overdraw them. But now we also can more easily position these windows. So now we need to position this lamppost, which is pretty much in the centre of the windows. Now when I apply tone to this drawing, this street sign is going to be in full sunlight, with the background behind it in shadow. Now I'm, I don't want to draw these windows in any detail at all, but I want to give the brain enough information to see them as being three-dimensional. And on this row, there's actually a window on the other side of this downpipe. Down here, our, our perspective line is almost horizontal now. There is a doorway here. Since I'm down here, we might establish ground level and just get this foreground done. This is my least favourite part of the drawing, but it's important to put just as much effort into every part of our drawing so that no single part detracts at the end. This van almost goes to this corner, and it's just a bit below these. And the front of the van is level with this centre door. And that will do. Now this car lets me have a sense of where things need to be here now, which is why I wanted to do it first. So this post comes down just below the wheels. I'm not sure why I did that, but it's there now. I just realized I forgot to switch to my 0 0.5 pen to do this section, which is always a hazard with me. So I'm going to get the rest of these cars in. Really just want to suggest these. There's one parked the other way, which makes it look a bit different to everything else. I don't think we can really draw this part of the building until we've put this tree in, which I don't want to do just yet. Now we get to move up with the dome. But first we have this little section here to do. And I can see that it goes pretty much to there. And the corner on this side lines up with the corner in here. How's that angle look? Now on top of this, I've got five figures along the front. The first figure is here. Now the most important thing with drawing figures such as these is to draw them very small and don't try and draw figures. Just try and suggest the shapes. And these heads need to line up also with whatever perspective line should be there. And that's more than enough detail for those. And we have someone on the side too. I want to line up this column with what comes beneath it and it lines up 
with about here. Now the next column sort of lines up with here. Now it does need to be higher than this one. If we look here, see it comes up higher. So really it's careful alignment with what I've already drawn here is the, is the way we're going. Now exactly how much detail we want to draw here is up to us. Because the dome is further away from us, I want to draw it with a lighter touch. Now this column again starts about there. This column is pretty much over this one. Things like putting little railings in help establish the scale because we have a sense of how high that is compared to a person. We do have some more sculptures here. Again, the important thing is that we just don't think figures, don't try and draw little people. Just try to suggest the sort of shape we see there. Now we have the very top. It's important to get these curves right. The thing about perspective is that circular discs that we see side on get higher, they get rounder and rounder. So this curve is going to be rounder than this one, which will be rounder than this one. So I'm going to put these figures in. Now I've taken to drawing domes now by actually drawing the top of the dome so that I've got something to aim up as I come up from the sides and I find that helps me be more accurate. And that's the side that's easier for me to draw. Where is the side going to end? It's going to end kind of there. Better than most attempts I make, I think. We all find curves easier to draw from some positions than others. Normally, of course, I would just turn the paper around. But because I'm filming and can't move the paper, I'm actually standing up and moving my whole body around to get a better angle for the drawing. Now I've got this little part on top. I want to make sure I center it and it is centered over the center of this. And again, I like to put a little dot where I want to put the head and then I draw down doing my best to keep the scale correct. It's, it's easy to draw it too large. Now I've got, in drawing terms, perhaps a, a simpler part of the drawing, but in time terms, it is still fairly time consuming because I'm talking about this tree. Now the thing about trees, when they're relatively close, we need to be careful with the size of the shapes we draw. If we suggest a leaf, then we're also suggesting the scale of the tree that we're drawing. We want to avoid doing large shapes unless we really have large leaves there. And I will now switch from my 0 0.3 to a 0 0.5 pen. And because I do intend to use tone in my next video on this drawing, I'm gonna make as much effort to hatch or cross hatch the leaves as much as I would if this were entirely going to be a line drawing. The important thing to do first off though is to establish how close the tree comes to what I've drawn or where it overlaps. So I'll firstly establish this line and I'll do that more carefully. I can see that if I come up to the top here, this, this part here lines up with the base of that statue. One of the hardest things in, in drawing trees is to do things like place these branches, but placing them so they do look fairly random rather than them all ending up being equally spaced, which is surprisingly difficult to stop from happening. Now this tree finishes down here which is about level with here. 
but I'm changing the directions of my hatch lines because I'm trying to suggest something of the roundedness of the clumps of foliage. Always consider the direction of hatching and cross hatching lines very carefully and wherever possible, use it to reinforce the surface shape of the object that the hatching lines are being placed on. I might actually go to a 0 0.2 for this further detail because it will show nicely that my principle of using finer pens for detail further back. And you can see how very lightly I'm suggesting the detail down this end of the drawing. Now there is a car down here. Now this car lines up with these. And of course I should, should have switched to the 0 0.3 for this pen. I think this pretty much finishes our line drawing of the new town hall in Berlin. So in my next video I'm going to talk through using sketch marker tone and demonstrate how applying tone to a drawing can really pop it into a three dimensionality that it's hard to achieve just with line work. I'll post this drawing on my community page so if you'd like to have a go using pen to draw the new town hall in Berlin you can have a go. And if you want to see the difference that sketch marker tone makes to this drawing, then just catch the next video. Why not have a go? And certainly if you do, have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.